Okay. Doctor, you can switch over your own. Okay. Right now, before the intro. Uh, one second. Like, no, just to check. Aishman, can we just uh, have doctor's video? Like, you know, just, can you just let me know if it's proper? Is it okay? Okay. A very good evening to one and all present. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for the third session of Cosmopolitan. Uh, Cosmopolitan uh, is organized by Snow Cloud in collaboration with Rotra Club of RC Ruya, Rotra Club of Bombay Film City, Rotra Club of Navi Mumbai Hillside, Rotra Club of Bedla College, uh, Society for Animal Safety India, Earth Brigade Foundation, and Leo Club of GN Khalsa. Let me introduce you all of y'all to our speaker, Dr. Sarita Subramanyam. Dr. Sarita Subramanyam, a wildlife enthusiast and a dentist by profession, has traveled far and wide with her husband, Dr. P.V. Subramanyam, across the length and breadth of India to stay connected to nature and have had uh, found a novel solution to help save wildlife from dehydration this scorching summer. At a chamber festival two years ago, they decided to sell 20 canvas size eye-catching wildlife photographs from their collection over the last 20 years to raise money for a continuous supply of drinking water for wildlife at Bandipur Tiger Reserve. The wildlife enthusiasts managed to raise an amount of rupees 1 lakh. This money will now be used to buy solar pumps for bore wells to supply water for the animals in the reserve. Their interest in wildlife led to the establishment of their NGO, Earth Brigade Foundation, which works for wildlife-related issues. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Sarita. Uh, thank you, Siddhan. Uh, thanks a lot to Snout Cloud team. Uh, thanks a lot to the viewers for their patience for um, you know enduring the delay. Really sorry about it. Yes, um, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> let's start with the session. Yeah, sure. Okay. So uh, today we'll be talking about Tiger Conservation 2021. Uh, and my first question to you to understand the topic better. Uh, how many tigers exist in the world and in India? And like, where do they exist now? Uh, okay, before I uh, answer your question, I just want to clarify on one aspect. Yes. I'm not a tiger expert. Okay. I'm not a tiger conservationist either. I would rather say that I'm more of a activist. I'm more of a wildlife lover uh, yes. and enthusiast. So if I make any errors in my comments or my uh, opinions, they are entirely mine because I have formulated these over the last 25 years of my wildlife experience. It is Absolutely. not coming from any scientific study uh, that I have done. I'm not a wildlife biologist either. So right. you, know, you will have to forgive me for any such transgressions which I make as I'm not an expert. All right. Okay. Um, okay. So to answer your question, how many tigers exist in the world? Uh, first, tigers are found not just in India. They are also found in other countries like uh, Bhutan, Russia, Thailand, um, uh, um, Laos. It's no longer found in Cambodia, but okay. it used to be present. Um, now, uh, it is estimated that there are approximately... 4,000 tigers all over the world, of which 70% of the population exists here in India. And India claims, as per the latest census, to have approximately 4,000 tigers. Um, now, uh, I do not agree with the numbers because the okay. numbers are um, fudged, manipulated. Uh, and um, a new methodology has been used. Uh, there have been repetitions in the number of tigers counted, plus the age of the tiger has been reduced to um, push for the narrative that tiger numbers have gone up. So the tiger numbers now is actually a political game. And it is more to, you know, more about posturing than actually factually being correct. So... Um, I don't think there are 3,000 tigers or 4,000 tigers in India, as mentioned. Uh, I think the numbers will be far, far fewer than mentioned. And uh, how, so I, I would want to know, how are tigers significant to the ecosystem? 
Um, see, tigers are considered the umbrella species. Okay, so like if you're under an umbrella, you're going to be protected, right? right. Um, so the tiger is considered an umbrella species because it renders protection not just to, let's say, mammals or um, insects and um, you know reptiles or amphibians, but the entire ecosystem. So even the fungi that are seen in the tiger's forest or algae or the fish nurseries. Right. Every or the, you know, obviously these are all the fauna, but the flora as well. There are so many endangered, uh, critically endangered, um, uh, you know, um, uh, and uh, become more and more. Um, uh, how do I put it? Becoming vulnerable uh, species, bird, um, tree species, plant species. Uh, so all this is protected by just us protecting the tiger. So we protect the tiger and all of this gets protected without us taking effort to individually protect all these species. So yeah. I would say that uh, the value of a tiger, uh, you know, is very intangible. You protect the tiger, you protect its home and you protect the entire ecosystem. So yeah. when people say that, oh, what is this big thing about halabaloo, about tiger conservation? It is a way of explaining to the masses why the need is there to protect the tiger. If I go and tell somebody that you need to protect the hangul or the Malabar bush, bush frog, nobody is interested. People are interested in charismatic species like the tiger or the, the elephant or the leopard or the rhino. It doesn't mean that the uh, rhino's habitat doesn't need to be protected or the tiger's habitat doesn't need to be protected. We have to understand that it is an entire ecosystem we are protecting. So Correct. whether it is a desert, whether it is a grassland, a wasteland or a coastal uh, tidal mud flats or mangroves, everything needs protection. And you protect Correct. the tiger, you protect all of this. That was very well answered. Thank you. So, uh, what are the reasons for the decline in tiger population? Uh, if you um, ask me bluntly, uh, one single um, single reason for the decline of tiger population would be the uncontrolled, unmanageable uh, human population. Right. And, it's because uh, our greed is insatiable. We cannot fulfill human greed. You can fulfill human need. You cannot fulfill human greed. And with our growing population, all we are doing is encroaching more and more into the tiger's needs. As of right. now, India has tiger reserves which amount to just 2% of our geographical lands, land mass. And we are not willing to accord protection to just this 2% and keep it, you know, keep the tiger reserve sacrosanct. Just 2% of our nation's landmass, we are not willing to keep it for the tigers and the forests. So obviously there will be decline because our human needs are constantly incre uh, increasing. We keep, you know, wanting to grow more fields. We want infrastructure. We want to reach fast. We want dams. We want river linking projects. Everything is about our greed. Correct. There is enough in this world. Enough nature provides for all our needs. It's not enough for human greed. Right. I mean, yes, I completely agree with you. Thank you, sir. So, um. Uh, moving on to the next question, why are tiger parts in massive demand? Does the tiger farming help with tiger conservation? Um, okay, uh, I'll answer this in two parts about uh, yeah. why tiger parts. Okay, why tiger parts are uh, in demand? Uh, unfortunately, uh, there are a lot of myths, superstitions, um, beliefs regarding um, the supreme powers of this majestic animal. So right. every single body part, right from its claws to its teeth to its penis is actually um, marketed, touted and used in traditional medicines in our neighboring countries and uh, there are also a lot of superstitions regarding tiger claws and uh, 
uh, you know benefits accorded to the person who's sacrificing the tiger um, in, in india so you will see many i don't know if you've seen it there are tiger claws which are used as pendants and it is supposed to bring good luck to the uh, person who's adorning it uh, my answer would be it didn't bring good luck to the you know original yeah. owner what luck is it going to bring to you i know so, but that is a myth and that's a uh, superstition so that is about the tiger parts and so it leads to the next question which is why tigers are farmed now the very you know if you look at the very phrase tiger farming it is so um, awkward because how do you farm a wild animal you only farm domesticated right. animals right animals right. which we humans have domesticated over the last few centuries here we are actually domestic uh, talking about farming wild tigers you don't do that so when tiger when you talk about tiger farming it is more to fulfill this increase in the market which supposed to cure headaches supposed to cure diseases supposed to cure impotence and uh, it leads to the number of increased tiger pop, uh, tigers in a captive form and this is usually done again it's not legal in india but it happens um, outside the country also many tigers are um, cubs um, are uh, star attractions in our zoos so when you go visit a zoo or an aquarium or anything these are animals in captivity in misery so there are also private zoos in india and abroad uh, many pet owners rich and affluent pet owners want tigers as pets i think you must have seen some video of some mid middle eastern person walking on the beach with two tigers so yes yes i have yeah so these are uh, these are uh, reasons why tigers um, are farmed you know as pets now you don't need a tiger to be a pet a tiger is a wild animal and let it be in the wild yes i that actually if you go to see uh it's more like an entertainment for people like you know watching tigers on the beach uh, a lot of youtubers they uh in the middle east they have tigers as pets like they keep them in you know huge ca cages yeah uh, and they'll go and feed them milk you know they'll play with them yeah uh, i've seen that so there are these yeah so they were actually petting zoos they are called petting zoos um, uh, which were uh, thankfully have been banned now um, in thailand um, and so there were these monks who would uh, allow you to pet the uh, tigers or um, uh, feed it milk um the cubs all all those um, they are just um, forms of entertainment and gimmicks and uh, uh, sadly many indians many indians used to go routinely to these kind of petting zoos zoos and think you know that they are doing something great by actually petting a tiger so despite my 25 years plus of travels across the length and breadth of the country our country i have never ever touched a tiger i've come pretty close to a tiger but i don't think i've ever been able to touch a wild tiger because i don't think i would be living to tell you this yeah if i had touched a <laughs> wild one yes you know i asked you about this earlier you, yeah i remember you telling me uh, yeah, but i've come very close i have seen a lot of uh, i think social media influencers uh, abroad a uh, lot of celebrities they uh, like when they go for parties you can see sedated animals kept over there especially tigers you can yeah. uh, there is a very famous video i think a lot of celebrities have done it in which they having a tug of war with a tiger you know there's a tiger there's a tiger behind a screen and there's a hole which and there's a rope passing through it so a very so there are two three people pulling the rope from, uh, from one end and the tiger on the other end so i think all of us you know all the viewers who are watching this i'm sure you must be aware of what i'm talking about okay i have not seen this video but i think you know if after having almost 200 
entertainment channels on television having entertainment uh, modalities on social media and other forms of entertainment why do we still need animals to entertain us can't we entertain ourselves right you know i'm sure we are evolved enough to entertain ourselves and keep you know using animals for entertainment worse is to use animals in captivity and say like for example as zoos or petting zoos or uh, you know uh, um, as pets to say it is for education it is ludicrous you do not need animals to be kept in captivity to learn about them if you want to have such centers they should be actually rescue and rehabilitation centers you do things to you know improve their lot they, they are actually just surviving out there you know the least you can do is uh, keep it make it easier for them to just remain wild i think every living being just wants to feel free and liberated that's true for humans that's true for tigers and if you're talking about the tug of war i have not seen it but i can tell you this that the tigers uh, we call it the as a dentist we would call it the temporomandibular joint that is the tmj the joint which connects the upper mandible and the lower mandible in animals okay. uh, it's a very very strong joint it is not going to imagine it has to bring down the tiger has to bring down um um you know maybe a one one ton a half a ton maybe of a bison that bigger bison it has to bring it down right or a sambar which is smaller of course yes. um, so it needs to have very strong jaws and Correct. that is why probably this tug of war which i mean i didn't know about it but i suppose that's why this game but so it's that's got the very reason strong they're making it they making it yeah video. that's why probably they are making that video yes and what would you want to say about the videos in which you know there are people all the owners who are feeding the tigers with you know milk bottles the feeding it milk and the little cubs <laughs> if you are just so brave and you think you know you uh, you are uh, why don't uh, they attempt to do it in the wild you know if they genuinely want to do this there are schemes where you say you adopt um, A, a zoo animal you know there are i'm sure there are many well meaning schemes so if you really want to tend and you feel the urge you know to go and uh, feed milk to a tiger cub why don't you associate with the local zoo where they are rehabilitating cubs i'm sure you can do that you know if you want to fulfill your maternal paternal instinct do human <laughs> service and actually you know do some good you can do it and actually you won't even have to pay money to go to thailand you can do it yeah. right here in uh, sgnp there are many cubs who are um, abandoned or rescued and need attention so spare some time and i'm sure you can go there and help out no i'll see it yeah <laughs> doctor another question for you has india's uh, conservation efforts in the last few years actually made a difference to the tiger conservation like facts and reality okay so i would say this is as a yes and no answer okay i mean it's not uh, in black and white uh, this would have lot of gray areas um i would say that uh, okay my bigger half is calling that i'm disconnected a bit um sorry um so okay coming back uh i would say it is uh, yes and no simply because uh, in uh, at the turn of the century the 20th century we had um lakhs i think 2 lakh tigers if i'm not mistaken of the number uh we had um, and there was a steady decline because of the britishers coming and killing and hunting and you know eliminating tigers uh, to fulfill their agenda and until 1972 believe it or not in 1947 we got independence right i think there were around um, there were around yes. uh, 1800 tigers uh, in 1972 when the wildlife protection act was formed now that was formed by the dynamic um, prime minister of our country uh, then uh, mrs indira gandhi who took on the hunting mafia she had the guts to take on the hunting mafia and say that no the tiger needs protection and unless and until we don't protect this 1800 tigers left in the wild we are going to lose all of them 
so in 1972 we had our first um, uh, tiger reserve uh, in um, corbett um, okay. it's not called corbett um, uh, Cor corbett tiger reserve um, and after that around that time i think we had nine tiger reserves okay so from 1972 when the wildlife Pro protection act was formed in the constitution and um, uh, there were nine tigers now in 2021 we have i think 52 tiger reserves and the third one is going to be i think formalized in chhattisgarh so you have to understand this that from nine we have got 53 uh, total 53 tiger reserves let's say now in india but how many night tiger uh, i mean how many tigers have we got actually in the wild in these 53 Correct. From yeah. the nine in nine uh, tiger reserves, which had eighteen hundred uh, tigers, now we have in the fifty-three tiger reserves only three or four thousand tigers. And nice. how is that an improvement? Because you have to remember, tigers are prolific breeders. Tigers breed a lot, and despite that there are millions of dollars that we have spent in the name of tiger conservation we have tiger experts we have um, entire forest department machinery you know uh, in the protection of uh, dedicated to the protection of tigers what good has that done to the tiger you talk about and then we have the audacity we have the audacity to talk about surplus tigers now, what is surplus tigers? How can tigers be surplus when our human population is, you know, so much? Yeah. So what, when, when, when people talk about success of tiger conservation, they talk about this surplus number, which is, again, a complete fallacy. It is a fallacy because tiger numbers have not really increased. They are moving out of their protected areas simply because in the protected areas, the management is so poor. And tigers are territorial animals. They like a, a certain territory. So if there isn't enough prey base, that is, there is no water, there is no food for their prey, the prey are hunted or eliminated, or they just died out because there's no food, they venture out. So when they venture out, you call them surplus tigers. So when, when, when I hear the term surplus tigers, I always want to ask the authorities, in that case, how many more are there in the core that you're talking about yeah. the surplus tigers, which are spilling out. So they're also called spillovers. So these spillovers are considered as success stories. So they are oh. not success stories. Yeah. So which is why I feel I want to, you know, elaborate on this that when you have these sub surplus tigers they are usually told they are sub adult tigers in search of new territories to indicate okay. there are so many adult tigers already inside the core area in the main protected forest that the young ones have to seek out new areas that's not the truth the truth is that yes the numbers are increasing but there's no food no protection inside the core area so they're all coming out into, into human settlements, which again, we are encroaching on. And so there, there is a proposal now in Maharashtra where we are actually talking about protecting certain mines and industries and trying to capture the resident tigers there, saying they are a nuisance. Actually, what is a nuisance? It isn't it the mining, isn't it the industries? I mean, so it's you're getting same. into. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, if you ask me, is tiger conservation a success? Partly, yes, because we had lost, I think, um, I don't know the exact year, but we had, I think the numbers had dwindled to 1400 despite the protection, so called protection, despite, you know, entire forest departments uh, taking salaries and doing their duties, the numbers had come down. So while most people will say the uh, reason for decline of tigers is poaching, okay, the tigers are poached, I would say it is habitat destruction because right. poaching requires firearms. You destroy the forest, 
without a single bullet being fired you have destroyed the habitat you have destroyed its home you have destroyed its food and you have destroyed the animal itself the tiger itself the other thing is the migratory corridors which i spoke about even earlier yes migratory corridors are very important because tigers again like territorial uh, tiger um, uh, creatures need to migrate to prevent um, inbreeding that is how we preserve the gene pool and if we don't protect the corridors by choking it by encroaching it by having infrastructure our uh, roads six la uh, six lane highways which are coming up inside the forest that is all choking up the tigers migratory corridors if you want the airport inside the forest that is called development but what good is it doing to the tiger population right doctor i have a few questions huh? um like how are these uh tiger reserves protected like how in, in case there's or there are hunters who are getting into these reserves how do they get in like are they paying or uh, are they giving are they bribing the officials or is there a, is there so how are what is the system of procedure like for protecting that you know or conservation okay if there are designated tiger reserves okay but the borders are all very um, nebulous okay we don't have fenced we don't have fenced borders so you know the interface between let's say the human settlements and the um, tiger reserves are very very um, intangible um, so yet we have uh, at least on paper we have boundaries uh, we have a protection department an armed protection force let's not forget the forest department is an armed force and okay. time and again time and again they are unable to protect wildlife now if you are talking about poaching okay? okay or even encroachment they are not able to actually use their arms why because one we don't have enough um, trained uh, officials um, forest guards we don't have state of the art so a poacher comes into the forest okay he comes with an ak47 what does our forest guard have a rusty uh, rifle which a double barrel rifle which will not fire he may not even have bullets he's not had training there is no um, uh, continuous education uh, there is so much apathy now how okay right. will you be able to enter an area without having local resources no poacher will enter the forest without the help of locals and and it goes without saying that while we have dedicated forest officials there are many 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 among them who are corrupt incompetent and apathetic so obviously there are you won't have wildlife standing in morchas for morchas you will not have um, rail roko you will not have rasta roko with wild animals all this is the recourse of only human beings so who is going to hold the forest department for not doing its duty that is where i think you youngsters can play a role right uh, another thing i would want to know is um, so we are receiving a lot of questions today and would you want me to ask you right away or after the session no i, I mean whatever whatever is convenient okay so manzi nimse is asking you uh, we have built so many sanctuaries for tigers to the foresters or the appointed people are they taking proper care of them no manzi i am really sorry to disappoint you but no our taxpayers <laughs> taxpayers money is not being fully utilized or um, uh, let's say put to full use uh, our forest department needs a complete revamp our wildlife laws are very good but they are not implemented swiftly or firmly or um, sternly so it is not a deterrent uh for anybody breaking most wildlife laws our legal system is so laborious that uh, nobody really uh, is scared of the consequences the few which the department finally manages to uh, let's say build up a case and all hardly holds in court um in the legal system 
uh if you know i think sansar chand the poacher who had killed many many tigers and you know was a notorious poacher i think um, you know uh, he hardly um, was penalized um so it's not the forest department needs a complete revamp and i think it's uh, really sad that um uh we are not investing enough in doing capacity building see we don't we are not training them we are not empowering them we are not letting them do their duties simply because the forest officials are now puppets of politicians correct across i agree with you across the board across party lines there's uh there's an addition to the question a video went viral where the tigers food the meat was taken home by the caretakers which should have been given for tigers as their food is that have, do you know about this sorry sorry i didn't get the question please a Can video uh, went viral uh, where in the tigers food like the meat for the tiger was taken home by the caretakers which should have actually been given to the tigers uh... as their food Uh, why will wild tigers need to be fed? I'm sorry. Why will it? Uh, I didn't understand the question actually. I don't know about the video, so maybe I'm not able to comment on it. So I don't know. See, if it's a wild tiger, it is supposed to eat on its own. Nobody is going to feed a wild tiger. So there's no caretaker for a wild tiger. So and, maybe yeah, that's correct. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, there's a question. There's a question. Uh. With uh. For you. what are your views on safe tiger project which was a, co a conservation program launched by indian government in 1973 has it made a difference uh save the tiger was not i'm not sure if it was launched by the um indian government what the indian government did in 1972 is make the tiger reserves and promulgate the wildlife act the wildlife act though a legacy of our colonial past is quite a powerful act it empowers you know every single uh, creature in the forest even the scorpion living under the rock is protected even a man made water body not just natural even a, na a man made water body inside the forest is protected the fish is inside the forest is protected according to the wildlife law see in spirit it is an amazing law but it's not implemented so it is like a paper tiger okay uh doctor uh, when we the fish is inside these, the uh, you know all these tiger sanctuaries uh where you have the safaris so when these safaris uh like when we venture out is does that cause any hindrance to the tigers inside because there's so many vehicles passing through the engine sound all of that like we are very overwhelmed you know very excited that you know we'll we'll find a tiger we are very excited to go on that safari uh but does that uh cause uh does that cause any damage to the forest or, or any or hindrance to the tiger like yeah so sidan see i am also a safarist okay yeah. in the sense i am also a wildlife lover who goes to tiger sanctuaries so if you ask me to uh, you know uh, put my hand on my heart and say uh, am i doing right i would have to say no uh simply because i think it's time we keep the forest inviolate inviolate of humans and i don't mean oh the residents or oh, tourists the forest need to be inviolate leave it to nature and mother nature will heal okay but that is utopian that is utopian and what i would see is tourism regulated and disciplined tourism is a boon to tiger conservation presently you only see uh, you know uh, tigers from eight or 10 sanctuaries um, popular parks where you know you see vehicles crowding and you know people harassing the tiger does the tiger get harassed uh, initially some tigers do but let me tell you from my personal experience i rarely rarely uh, stay if there is a crowd unless okay. i have been patiently waiting for sometimes maybe 3 4 hours for the tiger to appear and it chooses not to appear but you will not see a tiger in the wild unless the tiger decides to reveal itself the tiger can be 
10 feet away and you will not see it. So if the tiger is walking in on the road and you see vehicles all over, yeah. if it wants, it can just go away and it will melt into the forest and you will never see it. You will you will wonder how this orange and black thing has disappeared into the greens. But it will do yeah. that. Because it is a master camouflage artist. So it's a double-edged weapon, yes. So, so when we go to parks, if there are people who wear colorful clothes and you know don't have sensitivity. See, if you're going to somebody's, if you're going into the forest, first thing you need to understand is you are a guest. You need to respect the tiger's territory. That is the tiger's home. You are a guest going into somebody's home. Are you going to behave unruly in an unruly manner and a boorish manner if you go to somebody's house as a guest? You're going to be at your best behavior, right? That yes. is what we need to do when we visit safaris. We need to have a proper etiquette. Unfortunately, we Indians don't have. It's, it's, it's quite bad. But the tigers who are habituated, habituated to tourists and don't mind uh, you know, presenting themselves even if they want to, they're choosing it. Like I told you, if they want, they can just go. Okay, so the ne next question, God forbid, this never happens. I, I would never want to see this day. But what will happen to the ecosystem if tigers go extinct? Uh, you will have lots of buildings. You will have dams. You will have, um, you will have uh, six-lane highways. You will have airports. You will have fields. You have plantations. You will have um, resorts. Uh, all of this you'll have because what the tiger does is it protects. See, the tiger's value is intangible. In the open market, the tiger is supposed to cost approximately a crore, one okay. tiger. That is the body parts. But what yeah. about the intangible value it brings in? You know, how it protects your soil, how it protects your rivers, how it protects your trees so that you get oxygen. So if the ecosystem, if the tiger goes, the entire ecosystem goes. So might as well, if that situation arises, stock up on the oxygen cylinders. You will need it. That was very beautifully answered. And that Thank gives you. a very strong message, you know, to all of us. Yeah, because uh -huh. you have to protect the ecosystem. I, I want to say one more thing. I yes. feel... Uh, uh, the entire afforestation scheme, plant a tree, okay? I would say, I would stick my neck out and say, stop planting trees, stop wasting time, stop waste planting saplings, that is. You don't really plant trees, you only transplant or relocate trees. You need to stop wasting time, money, effort on planting trees. Do all of that to protect the ones which are existing. Stop allowing it to be destroyed. Stop deforestation, stop afforestation. Because it's like if you plant that sapling, you know, it's it's like a baby. You need to, you know, keep yes. putting water. You need to, there's a lot of yes. care after you plant it. And mm -hmm. that is and not done. About, yeah. yeah. And what about the ecosystem? It was, see, when there is a forest, okay, if there's a tree, for example, the tiger, okay, the tiger is there, the tiger needs prey, so it needs grassland, the trees are there, the tree leaves are there, it provides oxygen, what about the lizard that is there, the calotis that is there on the tree, the birds which are there on the trees, all of it, it is a self-sustaining ecosystem. And if you don't have that and you lose the tiger, you lose all of these intangible um, benefits. Uh, doctor, today itself, today I had seen a video in which uh, Abhirup had posted it. He was rescuing a monkey. Uh, uh, you know, all these monkeys are coming towards residential areas because I don't think there are trees left for them. They don't have, they don't have a home. We are destroying everything yeah. just so that we can live over there. And uh, there was another monkey, which a baby monkey, which got electrocuted and it couldn't eat. It ha its hands were burned. You know, that's how sad the things, uh, you know, all the things which are happening around us are. And uh, it's high time we, you know, we start reversing all these effects by working. I think by standing up for the, all the animals around us, I think we shouldn't mess with mother nature's force, you know. Because it will wipe us out in one go. 
Yes, and I think, um, see, uh, Siddhant, as a teenager, you know that, you know, your mother is very tolerant. But at some point, she's going to give it back to you and you will yeah. not have any answers. So Mother Nature will take her due no matter what. She's got immense patience. She'll tolerate everything that we humans are doing, but she will take back what is rightfully hers. This she will do. She will take back. So if we, you know, encroach and sit on the uh, make uh, dams and, um, you know, try and um, go on to the hill stations and, uh, you know, take up all the land, cut the trees, one fa flash flood and everything goes. I was there Correct. in Tumuna during the Kedarnath floods. I saw the damage it did personally. So I know that how Mother Nature gets back her revenge. And it's not very pleasant for humans at that stage. So, Doctor, uh, there's another question. Uh, what is the biggest threat to tiger conservation as of now? What steps have been taken to tackle this? Uh, the biggest threat I would feel if I had to again say, uh, contrary to the all the obvious ones like you know encroachments and all that, I think it is the apathy of citizens. Our citizens don't care. You know, we are so self-centered, we are so concerned about our own well-being that we do not want to step out of our comfort zone. So if you ask me, what is that one thing that is causing, that is the biggest threat to the tiger conservation, it is the apathy of the citizenry. I think we need to shed it off. Unless and until we do it, it's too late for the tiger and thereby too late for us. You know, so start speaking up, um, uh, do a little bit more than just online um, signing of uh, petitions, step out, raise your voice. See, if you're, in, you're a teenager, you have your resources, tell your parents how to connect you, write to your ministers, write to your authorities. Uh, if there is a forest official, for example, who's dedicated and honest, just ensure that he is actually supported well. You know, stand up on behalf of him. Don't allow the locals to do uh, vandalism. Write to your authorities, write to the CM, write to the forest minister, write to the MOEF minister. Tell them who are the bad apples you know in your uh, forest department. You know, speak about the good work, encourage them. At the same time, don't shy away from calling out the bad ones. So, Dr. Do the you feel? Uh, do you feel rallies and protests will make a huge difference if all of us come together? Uh, we need numbers. What lacks right now is numbers. We don't see enough people concerned where politicians, see in a democracy, politicians want numbers. You know, if there aren't enough wildlife enthusiasts, wildlife lovers, environmentalists, uh, climate change activists, all rallying on uh, different NGOs, you know, all of us rallying under one umbrella and standing up unitedly as a force to reckon with, I don't see the politicians taking any heed of what we rave and rant in rallies. This is from my personal experience with Avni's campaign. So... I feel that, yes, it creates awareness, but what good is that awareness unless it translates into protection of our wildlife and our wildlife's habitats? Yeah, it gave me goosebumps listening to this answer. It scares me. Yes, and I think sometimes what the road scene, which is why I said I'm more of an activist rather than a conservationist because I speak the truth. I think the conservationists are straddling two boats. They want to uh, placate human beings and mollycoddle humans and hope that it will help wildlife. I don't see like that. For me as a wildlife activist, a wildlife enthusiast, I want to protect wildlife. I'm going to leave the you know, well-being and welfare of humans to the human right activists and which are many in number. So they, they can take care. Let's dissociate the two. Let's dissociate wildlife uh, welfare, wildlife management from human welfare and human management. Doctor, officially the last question for you. After that, I have, uh, I have Himanshu Swain who is asking you another question. What is the reality of these tiger conservations, be it good or be it positive or negative? What is the reality? Um, I, I personally feel uh, there are very, very, very few tiger conservationists who are genuine 
to the cause. Now, they might have started with good intentions, but with all the compromises they have made along the way, I think tiger conservation has lost its um, impetus that it needs. I think tiger conservationists have let down tigers a lot. They could have done more. Um, I wish they had. I, even now, I wish they did. But um, tiger conservation is big business now. It's money. There's a lot of money in it. So if you want to become rich quickly, become a tiger conservationist. Whoa. Uh, doctor, another thing. Uh, do you think it's too late right now? We still have we still have a chance to reverse everything slowly, step by step. Or do you think it's too late? No, 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 no. I see. I I'm not a cynic. I'm a realist, and I'm extremely optimistic that yes, I don't think um, the children. The very fact that we are having this conversation, you know, shows that teenagers, kids like you, are interested. That instills hope in me. I don't think anything is lost for the tigers as long as you kids are interested still in tigers, still interested in having a conversation. But it is going to be too little, too late unless we act now. So again, I will say get off your comfort zone. Start speaking up. I mean, there are enough. You will have enough of your time to dedicate to yourself. The, the tiger may not have. If you don't act now, it might get too late for the tigers because their numbers are very few. We, we are a lot of human beings. Even the pandemic hardly eliminated humans. That is there. Yeah. Yeah. We still have lots of us left in this planet. We are the scourge of the planet. Human beings are the scourge of this planet. I agree with you. Yeah. So, but, but, I think you teenagers can definitely raise your voice, definitely mobilize yourself, definitely try and make a change. And, uh, you know, I think this question was partly answered. Uh, Himanshu's question, Himanshu is asking you, what can we do as teenagers to protect wildlife since we live in the city? A lot. A lot because if you're in the city, you have the access to, let's say, powerful people who make decisions. Make decisions on where a mine should be coming. Make decisions to sit on the wildlife board. Make decisions to actually give opinion to the chief minister. So, you know, you will have access to resources which, let's say, somebody living as a local stakeholder in the forest doesn't have that access. So I would say first thing is to accept that tiger conservation is not what is being told to you. Tiger con numbers are not going up. There are no surplus tigers. The tiger population is not a healthy one. So first accept that and then start doing something about it. I, I always tell you this, you know, Sidan, that, that pause when, you know, you're getting a blitzkrieg of information. Pause. Think for yourself, the answer will come to you. Right. And that was for Himanshu too. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, what do you think is holding all the teenagers back as of, as of now? You know, do you think social media is one thing? You think, yeah, again, you social media is double-edged. No, the fact that we are having this conversation now is because of social media. Yeah. And uh, as teenagers, I think you will be a little more self-absorbed than the rest of us. So I feel, but see, you guys have access to a lot of information which we didn't have. You don't have to reinvent right. the wheel. You don't have to make the mistakes my generation made. You know, I think if you can learn from our mistakes, Teenagers can do a lot. Just remember, you're at the threshold or likely to vote. Imagine how powerful that is. You get to decide which minister or which political party will save the environment, which minister or political party will speak up for wildlife, which will protect the mangroves, which will protect the forest, which will not allow an airport to come into um, uh, Rajura, will not allow a metro to come, a metro shed to come into RA. 
you know so choose choose uh, wisely and uh, you know start speaking up for the voiceless and voteless doctor uh, so one i want you to give a message or to all the parents out there because you know there are some some kids who are not allowed to go out and protest we are you know uh, we are very limited uh, we are very i'm sorry but restricted to a lot of things like these you know like going out for protests so any would you want to give a message to all the parents out there who you know uh, who are stopping their kids from standing up for a good cause yeah go with them <laughs> go with them you know kids are wise these days i mean i again will say you have access to information which we didn't have we didn't have access to the kind of plethora and easy availability of information you know uh, you kids are almost precocious compared to my generation with the information overload that you have use it if i can tell you and you are empowered tell that to your parents that why they if they feel protected and rightly so okay i think parents can accompany their children in fact instead of let's say one child if a parent goes that's 1 plus 1 that's two people at least for the same Correct. tiger which otherwise didn't have anybody right so go along with if you feel so go along with your child and most of these protests rallies for um, wildlife environment most of them are very very congenial and very uh, peaceful um, you know most of them are not rowdy and uh, they are all very gentle people so <laughs> for, you know you be part of it okay so doctor i'll just check if there are any more questions Uh, I'm I'm so sorry. It's all I know. Six thirty nine. We have a time limitation. Uh, uh, no. Like, would you want to ask, doctor? You all can unmute yourselves. Ayushman, is the live stream still on? Okay. Okay. So I think uh, now that we're done with the questionnaire, you can end it. and uh, the people who are in the zoom meeting can ask doctor questions other than that if people uh, who are still i mean uh, watching the live stream you all can dm us the questions uh, as doctor has a time limitation we'll uh, be sending her the questions and we'll put it up in a story format on our page okay yeah uh yes i would like to first thank uh, siddhant ayushman and snout cloud team for giving me this opportunity to speak to reach out to teenagers see i have always wanted to uh, give a different point of view and then i will leave it to the uh, viewers to decide uh, you know the teenagers to decide what they would like to follow but so far whenever i have spoken to them they have always told me that they didn't have this point of view they have they have the usual one which is the usual narrative that is given to them i am presenting them with a different narrative if they would like to pursue that you know well and good otherwise whatever little bit you can do for mother nature she is more than happy so thanks a lot ma'am you're most welcome you know uh, i really wanted to have these interactive sessions with you because you've been doing a lot for for all the wild animals out there your ngo has been doing a lot and i really wanted you to be recognized you know for the work you've been doing you deserve no it. siddhant i'll tell you why because i told that last time also i am only paying my tuition fees ka partly mother nature has taught me so much i'm just little bit of my tuition fees i'm paying to her so i don't right. think i'm doing so much i think it is my foremost duty and that is how it should be for every citizen we should be duty bound to protect nature that should come within like it should be right. that this is my duty and i have to do this like we look after our parents it's duty bound mother nature is our mother we have to protect her and uh, another question from my side is is there any way all of us can uh, contribute 
uh, and help Earth Brigade Foundation? Uh, I would uh, see definitely as an NGO, we all need money. But what I would actually like is that when we pers- like you know when we pursue a particular cause, for example, our NGO takes up PILs as well. So we fighting for yeah. Ravni uh, and bringing justice to her um, killing. You know so. so um, so that um, you know there is there are no more such killings uh, we are fighting for ra's uh, pil uh, wildlife uh, through a pil i would like more and more people to be you know supportive of what our ngo does because there aren't too many ngos who take up uh, causes for wildlife so even if you right. can you know support us with saying yes what our ngo is doing is right you know that would be great if you can uh, we don't take up volunteers as of now but um, if there is a job requirement or an internship and you would like to apply then i will definitely try and help you all out as an intern uh, all the viewers uh, you all can check out ma'am doctor's work uh, on earth uh, brigade foundation on instagram uh doctor would you like to mention the other social media platforms or uh, you are available on and uh, where people can get to know more about yeah. your work it will be actually on facebook as of now because the website is under construction but once the website comes you all can access that and the insta page also is getting i am technologically challenged so thankfully now we have somebody on board who is helping us uh, she will update pritika fernandez uh, she will update the insta page so you will have some information but a lot of information is available on facebook what we have done so far uh, what little we have done and there's miles to go for uh, us to help mother nature Oh, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for letting us know. Uh, I, I thank all the members and all the viewers who are currently watching uh, Dr. Sarita's session, okay, in collaboration uh, with all the Rotary clubs and Leo clubs and all NGOs who have come forward and you know join hands for Cosmopolitan. Uh, I request all of you all to share uh, the YouTube link, our live session. let it reach out to more people out there so in this way we can motivate uh, and you know uh, empower other teens around us and this will really you know help us uh, you know bring a change thank you so much for joining us today yeah. thanks a lot sudan i'll thank sign you, off i'm most welcome yes thank you can you can keep your yeah. video off if yeah okay. yeah thanks no